So let's talk about your mom and, and the situation with her crisis, yeah. health crisis. And, you know, most people would just take the doctor's word for it and be like, oh, gosh, she's going to be, you know, yeah. crippled for the rest of her life. Yeah. So, so yeah, five and a half years ago, my mom had a, a massive aneurysm, which is a bleed in the brain. And uh, this, we had a medical misadventure from the get go where the doctor just thought she was having a migraine and, you know, treated us like, like she, like she's a neurotic old lady and gave us some painkillers and told us to wait in the corner. And so we were waiting in the ED for six hours and she was just getting worse. And like the pain when you have an aneurysm in this blood is apparently the worst pain that you can possibly imagine. Your brain is dying, basically. Wow. And I knew that she was in trouble, but at that point I didn't know anything about anything, you know, and I didn't know what to ask for or how to push for anything. And I ended up after six hours ringing up a friend who was a paramedic and she had crewed for me in Death Valley and she knew mum very well and so on. And she came up and she knew the hospital, um, came up, she took one look at mum and said, oh my God, she's having a neurological event, a stroke or an aneurysm, um, something of that sort. And she went to the doctor and she said to him in no uncertain terms, and she's a very strong lady, uh, get this woman a CT scan right now she's having something major going on in there. So he finally relented and we had the CT scan that come, came back blood right throughout the brain. And then they started to run and jump around. And, and they, my friend looked over at me and I could tell by the look in her eyes, she was like, this is not going to, she's, you know, this is not going to end well. And I'm like, you know, terrified at this point. And my, my dad comes over to me and he's like been married to my mum for 55 years. And he's like, oh, we better start planning the funeral, you know. And I'm like, hang on a minute, dad. I grabbed him and I shook him and I said, she's alive. She's breathing. And I'm going to, I promise you, I'm going to do everything in my power to, to bring her back. And you just follow my commands, dad. You do what I tell you to do. Yep. When people are in crisis, you give them jobs. Yeah, because it gets yeah. their logical brain thinking. So I gave them jobs to ring so-and-so and organize this, get my brothers. We had to get down to Wellington, which is our bigger hospital because we live in a regional town. We had to, and then I stayed with mum and we had to wait for the air ambulance, which took another 12 hours to get there. And so the, the gold standard for something like this is to get them into surgery within an hour. We had 18 hours before oh, we were wow. in surgery. So wow. it was a miracle that she was still alive at this point. Um, they did the surgery, amazing surgeons, and they took the pressure. They started to drain the blood off the brain. And then she was, uh, for the next three weeks, she had another operation a couple of days later where they had to do, uh, we were given the, the choice either cut through her brain and put a clamp on her or go up through a femoral artery. And she had a 50% chance of dying one way and a 25% chance of dying the other way. So we went with the lesser one. But it meant that she was going to have to have two operations, probably. But we thought that was the better option. Which option and, was less risky? Uh, the, going up through the femoral artery, which they okay. can do this incredible work that these surgeons do. They did that. And she had another stroke on the operating table. Oh, and now my. she was paralyzed down the right hand side, but she survived and the, the, they'd done their job. But then she was in and out for the next three weeks of coma. And as when you have blood in the brain, it causes spasms, uh, vasospasms, they're called, and it kills off different parts of the brain. So she was losing more and more of herself as that three weeks went on. And in this time, I'm like, right, I'm not going to be caught short again. I'm going to start researching and learning everything I possibly can. If I get a chance to get her out through this critical phase, then I'm going to do whatever it takes to get, to get her back. And that was the commitment that I made to her, that I would never leave her, that I would always be there for her that I would do whatever it takes to get her back and after this three weeks she came out of the coma they'd done an amazing job these doctors and she stabilized but she had massive brain damage so she had hardly any higher function left she had no ability to control any bodily functions she had a couple of words that was that was it she had no idea who she was she had no memory she didn't know who I was she was basically a baby in a, in a woman's body we took her back to New Plymouth our local hospital and then they had her in there for three months rehabilitation and in this time they said, look there's just nothing for us to work with she's not improving she's never going to have any sort of quality of life again we're going to have to put her into an institution and she's 24 7 around the clock here 
And I, at this time, I had done a lot of racing at altitude in the Himalayas, and I'd had altitude sickness before. And I was seeing in her symptoms of oxygen deprivation. She had infections in, in her mouth. She had all this. Uh, and I, so I said to the doctors, I think she's got sleep apnea. Or I don't think she's breathing at night. And she, of course, she was sleeping 20 odd hours a day. And the doctor said to me, ah, we don't need that. That's not, that's not true. And so I went in and I bought an outside consultant in, which was against hospital rules, but we snuck them in in the, in the night. We did this sleep assessment and it came back that she had severe sleep apnea. She, had, she was chain stoke breathing. In other words, she was on her way out. She had 70% oxygen stats, which were at, at the worst point in the night, which meant that she was just killing off what remaining brain cells she had when she was asleep because she wasn't breathing. So that was my very first win. And then I thought, okay, what else can I work out that the doctors haven't worked out? And what else can what else is out there? And I came across something called hyperbaric oxygen therapy, mm -hmm. which for those yeah. looking is what's in the background there. Quite familiar and, with that. Yeah. yeah, very, very powerful therapy. And I studied at Dr. Harch in America, read his books and realized that for brain injury, this was massively powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not accepted here for, for brain injury, but I decided I'm going to get you this. So I came across a... Uh, um, a commercial dive company that had one of these in our town and I approached them and said can I use your chamber here's my research here's my situation and these incredible people said yeah you can do that so after as soon as I got her out of hospital which was three months later and I had a hell of a battle to get her at home because they wanted to put her in an institution and I ended up having to take my big brother with me who looks like the rock and we finally got the, the resources we needed to, <laughs> to take her home. Amazing. <laughs> they weren't a little bit of external me. influence like that. Oh yeah. To sometimes bring the rock along. Yeah. Sometimes it's required. Yep. <laughs> Words weren't getting through to these guys. So mm -hmm. I eventually um, managed to get her home. I took her straight down into this factory setting, if you can imagine, this big hyperbaric chamber, which looks like a big LPG cylinder. Mm -hmm. And we stick her on a forklift and we stick her into this chamber and we do an hour and a half session five days a week for the, the first month. And everyone thinks I'm completely bonkers, but I'm like, this is the only thing on offer here for this sort of a brain injury and I'm mm -hmm. doing it. And um, after 33 treatments, this chamber had to be taken off on a contract and I lost access to it. But I was seeing that she was starting to improve. She was starting to try to talk. She was moving her hand. She was trying to, you know, communicate. She, I could just see her trying. Wow, wow. So she wasn't getting up and walking, but it was working. Mm -hmm. So then I, like, I've lost the chamber. Okay, obstacle. What do I do? Uh, I mortgage the house. I buy a hyperbaric chamber. I install it in my house, which is what we got in the background, which was not easy to do, and it was quite hard to organize and so on but then I was like okay this is working so then I put her through session after session and we did a protocol of 40 in a block and we'd have a month off and as she started to wake up and come back then I studied everything else I studied epigenetics and gene testing I studied diet I put her on a keto diet I studied nootropics I studied functional neurology I studied every aspect of brain rehabilitation that you can possibly do and I stayed one step ahead of her in her progress and it took me like 18 months just to teach her for example to roll over in bed you know that's how glacially slow some of this was she had no vestibular system so she had no balance she didn't even know how to sit without wow. collapsing to the side wow. so I had to teach her in the mirror what was straight and you know try to get her brain to recalibrate what mm -hmm. you know, so a lot of functional neurology was involved in that it took me a year and about a year and a half to for her to take her very first steps in between a, a parallel bars. And she started to take these tiny, tiny steps. And then I knew I, I had her. Right? I, I knew we were coming back. And wow. I put her through an eight-hour program every day that I developed. And, you know, I spent a ton of money and a ton of resources and just searched every expert there was on the planet on neuroplasticity and all of this and I read everything and I I just <laughs> I was just obsessed at this point I stopped I'd stopped running for obvious mm -hmm. reasons because it was just mm -hmm. taking up everything so I was still running my two companies and trying to do that at night time and look after her all day long story short my mum is now fully recovered <clears throat> it took me two and a half years to get her back to full health um, 
She's now 79 years old. She has a full driver's license. She has her full power of attorney oh, back. She has complete control over her life again. And there wow. is no sign of her injury. No whatsoever. kidding. No, she's. Wow. So she's communi- She's got her. Does she have her memory back? Full. Yeah. Oh she, she's missing a year of the, the first year of, of that time after the aneurysm, but she has basically everything else back. So, yeah. That's, That's an incredible story. You yeah, know, it is. It's just, I've heard this so many times in different ways, different things, you know, cancer, there's no hope, right? And someone says, yeah, there's hope, we're going to yeah. do this, right? And, and researching and, and diet and functional medicine and hyperbaric treatments. It's incredible, the power of the human body to heal yeah. with intention, but you got to have hope, faith, intention, desire, you know, incredible discipline to do yes. it. And, and this be, is and patience as well, right? This took oh this is a five-year journey for you, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm five and a half years in. I like had her at the gym yesterday. And you know, occasionally I lose my shit because it's like when you're retraining someone's neural pathways, it's the most mind-numbing, sure. repetitive. Like I could teach her <laughs> for, for hours and hours and hours the same thing and then the next day she can't do it again right you know like it, it, it just just blows your mind and so occasionally i lose it you know and like oh for god's sake mama you know like come on <laughs> and then i catch myself and think you know <laughs> stop right. being a dickhead um you know um and there's some little things that she's like we, we're still working on some like she lost all of her uh, flexibility so getting up and off the ground and things like that mm-hmm. i'm still working on aspects like that which never you know, doing really, yoga every day yeah, yes i do do mm-hmm. yoga with her but it's very mm-hmm. basic basic mm-hmm. level yoga you know yeah. because she can't do a, a lot of things we still can't tip her upside down or anything so her head doesn't like being out of uh balance her vestibular system is so there's a there's some little things that are still there but she has this full life again you know um and this is uh, so the book that i've written is called relentless how a mother and daughter defied the odds it's mm-hmm. the one there um and this i wrote it because i wanted to empower other people going through journeys so i don't care whether it's a cancer journey or a health journey or a you know you're an athlete and you it's all about the mindset and I had to dedicate everything to bringing her back. But I, you know, this is my mum, you know, like whatever it takes, I don't care. I don't care if I lose my house, my car, my everything. If I can get my mum back, that's all that mattered, you know. Mm-hmm. And that was that attitude of going all in. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of the people that I work with, because I work now with a lot of people going through rehab journeys, is they don't go all in. Right. They go in. They go well, they come to me and they one go, foot in there and one foot in the traditional medicine, yes, you exactly. know, believing the doctors who say there's no hope. Yeah. And, and whether you're going to die of cancer or you, you know, yeah. and we're all going to die at some point. Yeah. But it's in my, my attitude, I'm a fighter. I'm a warrior. I'm a, I'm a person who like, I don't, I don't, I don't give up and I won't give up until my last breath. And that's the way I see life. And that's the way I approach life. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, unfortunately, I had a, a, a dreadful situation just um, eight months ago with my dad, who, who I lost. Um, oh, sorry. Wow. And, uh, but I fought for him. Like, you know, like we were in the hospital, hospital setting. He's had a massive aneurysm in the stomach, which is oh. a big blowout of the main artery in here they'd done this incredible surgery. They didn't think that he would survive even to the hospital, but my dad was one tough man. And even though he was 81 years old, he he hung on. Like he had no brachial pulse for an hour and a half and he was still talking to me. I mean, that's how tough my dad was. <laughs> he survived this massive operation, 28 uh, units of blood and all this. And he came through that and we looked like we, were, we had him. And he was on his way back and we were just like, unbelievable. And then on day three, he started to develop sepsis. And I started to fight for him to get intravenous vitamin C because I, because of my research now, um, I, know, I know about vitamin <coughs> C. And so I 
fought against the system and they had no other answers for us. We'd run out of options and from their point of view where he was dying and they would not let me do intravenous vitamin C, which I had all the clinical studies to show that in sepsis, they you know, really have massive results with, with, with vitamin C. And I came up against a brick wall of bureaucracy and I took wow. on this legal system. I took on the ethics committee. I took, you know, while I'm standing at my dad's bedside, 18 to 20 hours a day, protecting him, advocating for him, trying to stop him putting ex excessive drugs into him and fighting for vitamin C in his case to just have the chance to give him a chance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it took me 15 days of battling uh, and keeping him on life support. And they finally relented and let me do the vitamin C. And the very first one that we got into him, and by now he had multiple organ failure and he was oh, at death's door. It's too late. Huh? It was too late. But the very first one, it actually turned his white blood cell count around, his, his uh, kidney function improved, that we got him off noradrenaline. They were like, whoa, you know. But then they stopped me doing the second because you need the, every six hours, ideally. And it took me 18 hours to get the second one and 18 hours of fighting them every time to get Good the Lord. next session. And so, of course, he died two days later um, where they, they forced, they were forcing me to take him off life support. And, but I, you know, like I fought with everything I had and my dad died with an intravenous going into his his veins because that was that's who I am and that's who he was he was not like when he was lucid in the moments when he was lucid wow. I was like dad do you want me to keep fighting and he wow. just was like yes you know like he, he, he was intubated so he could only nod but he was like yeah I want to keep fighting and and so I fought for him until the very last minute you know and I'm I, I haven't shared that story yet, Mark, because it's been too emotional, you know, like as you can imagine, and I don't know what to do with it, but I'm, I'm determined that even though I lost my precious father, the, his legacy will be that I'm going to fight for people yeah. to have access to things like, like that yeah, in that agree. setting, and I'm going to turn this into a positive, you know, because... Yeah. This needs to change and our system needs to change. Our system is barbaric. And, and with is. all due respect to the well-intentioned doctors out there, and many of them would agree with me. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, the biggest cause of death is, is this bureaucratic and ancient sickness health system that we consider to be so freaking modern. You know, yeah. it's insane that they wouldn't let you give your dad vitamin C. Yeah. That, that's when they, insane. Yeah. When they had I mean, no that, that's, like, that's like rubber room stupid. Yeah. Anyways, you know, yeah. I, I got to I got to share something. This is for both you and the listeners along these veins. But um, I'm part of this this one group, this networking group. And we had a visitor um, last time I was there. And, you know, I don't know how this topic came up, but someone uh, mentioned that um, they were going in for a colonoscopy or something like that. Check, mm -hmm. And that you know, they found some polyps. And now he's you know scared, right? Because he's yeah. going to have to go get those cut out. And this guy said, listen, of course, you have a right to be scared. You know, this is real. But this, this is what happened to me. I went in and had a colonoscopy and blah, blah, blah. And they found like 12 polyps. And they said, and they were like advanced. And he said they wanted to go right away and cut colon out and give him chemotherapy and do the whole thing. And they didn't give him much chance of living. Because he had cancer. He had colon cancer. Wow. And um, it just so happens this guy travels to China like every month you know mm -hmm. he's got multiple business he's very he's a pretty wealthy guy he's got multiple businesses over there and so um i don't know if, if he was over there or when you know or maybe he was uh, maybe he contacted one of his chinese uh, friends who was a doctor and the doctor said do not do that come over here yeah i'll see what i can do right yeah so he went to china and this doctor did this procedure and he wouldn't tell him what he was doing until afterwards right because he didn't didn't want him to get any false hopes or anything like that. And um, about a month later, he's back in the United States. He went to, you know, the next checkup and the doctors were just floored because all the lesions were gone. Wow. Everything was gone. And what did he do? Well, he did stem cell therapy, yeah, but he yeah. did a type of therapy that's wow. illegal in the West yeah. because they did a genetic match. And they found that if you, if you can find a, a minimum 40% genetic match in a human fetus that, you know, and you use those stem cells, then it can cure 
cancer like this. Wow. But it's illegal to do in the West. And there's many things that are, you know, either illegal or put down or, you know, and it, it, things like hyperbaric, you know, things like yeah. intravenous vitamin C and, and many, many others. There's, well, like, there's so many others. I get acupuncture twice a week. Yeah. And I pay for it cash because, you know, insurance doesn't pay for it. But acupuncture is an extraordinary ancient tool to harmonize and balance, you know, your nervous system and your entire internal homeostasis and improve your immune system, right? Yep. And, and I had acupuncturists just healing people from COVID just with acupuncture and with, with you know, with herbs. Yep. Isn't that fascinating? And, oh, God, don't say that, Mark. You'll get taken off here. Oh, I know. I'll get canceled right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we got careful. a lot of work. Oh, and, and same thing with hyperbaric treatment. Like, you're kidding me. Like this is now known. Like we're using hyperbaric yeah. here in the country, this country for healing uh, brain trauma, TBI. Yeah. You know, vets. So, yeah. so people PTSD. have the money or yeah. who have a special case like a vet, you know, you can get a charity to pay for it now, but there's like one hyperbaric chamber per coast yeah. or something like that. And so you can, you, you have to buy your own basically. And so now there's a company and I actually looked into it and maybe it's the same one you have where I can rent a soft chamber or buy mm -hmm. one. And I think it costs like 18, 15 to 18 grand or 20 grand. Yep. It's yep. a lot of money for a lot of people, but so, and it I don't is, have, you know, I it. don't, I'm not like a, a horrible case, but I'm looking at this from, and people are laughing. I'm not, a, I'm not a basket case, obviously. I'm a, a high performing individual, but I look at this from the standpoint of peak performances and longevity, which I know that yeah. all the research you did for your mom and dad also have direct implications for peak performance and longevity. And so I think by the end of um, this year or even next year, I'll have a hyperbaric chamber, you know, here in my office, I've got I my sauna, you know, hot, cold treatment, you know, I've got the nootropics. I'm, I am, I noticed on your website that you promote NMN and some other yep. uh, supplements for longevity. So I'm taking Long, lifespan. I'm, yeah. Lifespan <laughs> is a great book. And so yep. I learned about that. Um, I, I take some, those same supplements that uh, Dr. Sinclair was talking about. He and his dad taking so, yeah, resveratrol, M and M, uh, metformin. I've got uh, one for you. Spermidine. What's it called? Spermidine. I have to no. tell you about that. We'll, we'll tell you about that off air. It's uh, but it's, it's another brilliant one that you want to add to your regime. How do we spell it? That. So so uh, we, we like you, yeah, like the word sperm. Okay. <laughs> It okay. sounds terrible. So I'm starting to get, get a sense for where this comes from. <laughs> well, it's no, it's, it, it's, it's present in sperm. That's where it's got its name, but it's actually yeah. present in lots of things. And it's actually a wheat germ extract, but okay. um, very, very powerful for anti-aging. Uh, Can you get it on Amazon? <laughs> uh, yeah, you actually have a company over there that gets it. And, and I also can hook you up with the uh, hyperbaric chambers. Um, so yeah, we, we need to talk on that front. But like my home, and I, you know, I'm not super wealthy or anything, but I, I prioritize health. Of course. So my house is full of biohacking uh, gadgets and machines. Well, just for the <laughs> listeners, because I've shared some of the things that I do many times what what is your like protocol for health longevity you know biohacking you know you could <laughs> summarize you, it you know <laughs> yeah in, in two minutes I'll, I'll tell you all the stuff that i have and, and maybe a bit about my morning routine and things like that right. um so yeah hyperbaric oxygen therapy i get in there at least three times a week mum's still having her treatments my right. whole family uses that Brain injury, very, very powerful, very, very good for longevity, produces more stem cells, is, is uh, anti-inflammatory, um, gets through the blood-brain barrier, more oxygen, hyper-oxygenates the body. That's hyperbaric. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Then I have like ozone, an uh, ozone machine. Um, mm -hmm. So I do ozone, which is O3, which is, again, another of the... Um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, oxidative therapies. So... Um, that are all using oxygen to an increase in oxygen to, to basically do what they do. So and is that, that just like a breathing device or what is that like? Uh, so no, like you don't breathe, breathe oxy uh, ozone. Ozone is damaging to lung tissue. Okay. Um, there is, an, you, you can, if you get it with a doctor, you can get, uh, they, they take your blood out, they put ozone into it, they put your blood back in and then they do something called 10 pass therapy, which is the extreme version of that, wow. uh, where you get a heck of a lot of ozone. It's an anti, uh, antiseptic. Basically it goes in and it kills 
the viruses mm -hmm. or viruses uh, very powerful for for that it's also um, it, it it's I've done three episodes on my podcast if anyone wants to dive deep into mm -hmm. ozone um, mm -hmm. but I have a home machine so that's ear insufflation that's rectal insufflation that's vaginal insufflation that's for healing of wounds like you put a, mm -hmm. if you if you cut your arm you put a bag over your arm and you pump ozone into the bag it will heal twice as fast as if you um, if you didn't do that um, so it, it, very powerful then I have an infrared sauna mm -hmm. um, I have like vibration plates I have mm -hmm. um, you know. I have a nebulizer with uh, 3% hydrogen peroxide which is my first aid kit if we ever got exposed to COVID or any respiratory mm -hmm. viruses that, mm -hmm. that will kill it in the mm -hmm. in the tract here very quickly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then I have yeah my NMN with my resveratrol every morning so I take a gram and a half oh, I'll tell you an interesting fact uh, this is I've been on an NMN for seven months so my mum's had 12 kilograms of weight loss because it upregulates the metabolic pathways mm -hmm. starts to my I've had four kilos of weight loss and I wasn't overweight to begin with but and now and that's without muscle loss mm -hmm. um it uh it's reversed my menopause. I was going through menopause. Too much information, people, but it's reversed. No, but you know, it's interesting you said that because that's something that David Sinclair, I'm trying to get him on my podcast. Yeah, um, yeah me too. Who wrote Lifespan. He said that um, he's worked with some people with this, that protocol, NMN, resveratrol, mm -hmm. quercetin, and metformin. Yep. And some women in their 60s have basically so gotten pregnant. Cycle. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, trip, huh? Yeah, I mean, I, my husband and I have been trying to have a baby for years, and we we lost our baby son two years ago, and um, he died just after a couple of hours. He had spina bifida, so we've been through yeah. the freaking ringer. But um, so we're still trying. So I'm about yeah. to go through IVF. So I've been on metformin, um, NMN, and metformin, right. NMN on a high dose. You know, yeah. so that I can yeah. maybe do it myself. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, yeah. And we've definitely reversed menopause. I haven't gotten pregnant yet, but we're still working on that. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence around that, and that yeah. it's actually creating new eggs, which is really controversial. Right. Um, I'm on metformin. I'm on um, ol uh, cold pressed olive oil, which also mm -hmm. upregulates mm -hmm. that suit mm -hmm. one gene. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that's going to help autophagy, intermittent fasting when I yeah. can be disciplined enough um, and exercise, of course, uh, right. and sauna, right. very, yeah. so heat, cold mm -hmm. therapies, breathing therapies, you mm -hmm. know, breathing exercises. And that's my, so that's my sort of daily routine, if you like, right. includes all of those, all of the above or one of, you know, I don't every day do a hyperbaric, but yeah, probably every third How day. How long do you so. do the hyperbaric? Like 45 minutes? Um, an hour and a half is ideal, but yeah, usually it, for me, it's about an hour because that's all I can sort and of can manage. You do, can you like read a book or, or do you have to like just sit there and kind of breathe and meditate? Or No, you can. I listen to your podcasts in there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, when I so, get my chamber, I'll listen to your podcast. In my excellent. Chamber. That would be awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, tremendous. no, there's so much we can do, people. And the message that I want to get across is be preventative, be right. educate yourself. When you are aware of the things that are out there, then you suddenly become empowered to help your loved ones, to help yourself, to help your friends. Um, and I know I'm a pain in the ass to my friends because I'm going around talking, well, did you know about this? You know, and oh, you've got that. Well, this you have to take this. <laughs> and you can see their eyes glaze over. <laughs> But it's good to have that knowledge when you need it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, hormones, I think, are a, a thing, if we're just briefly touching. Um, hormones are a really important thing, uh, especially for, for guys, it's just as much as for women. And mm -hmm. keeping our hormones at optimal levels, and you need to be under a good doctor uh, to do that. And yeah. But there are some good doctors in, in the States that, that do hormone replacement yeah. carefully and safely. I've been doing that. Um, and I can attest to the power of that. And I'll, yeah. I'll be doing a podcast with my doctor, Dr. Gabriel Lyons soon. Um, she's really? like a concierge doctor. She works with a lot of SEALs, has really helped people with a lot of, like, believe it or not, most SEALs, most spec ops folks have TBI. And yeah. most, because of that, most of them suffer from sleep apnea. 
Yep. And I just got tested for sleep apnea. They said, sure enough, you got moderate sleep apnea. I'm like, wow. you're kidding me. Wow. Who knew? And yeah. so fit. And so, yeah. And not overweight and all those things. No, no, that I don't have think... any of the symptoms, but no. that, you know, it's, it's wow. you know, somehow with the way the brain is working. I, I pretty much don't want to do their traditional treatment of, of basically having that breathing apparatus at night. So oh. I'm thinking hyperbaric is the way to go. You know, I want to be proactive and just heal that, whatever that a is. Absolutely. It, it, get as many sessions back to back in a close block that you can. Right. And then the other thing, there's a pillow called the Patney pillow. I had them on my podcast recently and I've got it for my mum and my husband. Um, that if you don't want to go to sleep apnea route and the sort of full CPAP machine, then um, this pillow is, is revolutionary uh, and stops snoring and it works because my husband what's it called snores. my wife will be your best friend <laughs> patney patney pillow i'll send you the link over in an email Pat, like p-a-t or p-a-t-n-e-y P -A -T -E -Y. it's actually a new zealand company Got francis it. anderson was on my show a few weeks ago Sweet. um and, and that's if you if you don't want to go to full sleep apnea route because that's pretty invasive then mm -hmm. this is what i would try and it's a pillow uh, that holds you in the right position, opens up your chest and just opens up those airways a little bit better, basically. So that combined with the hyperbaric and yep. you'll need probably 80 plus treatments. 80. You know, so you need to wow. you need to get your own one if you yep. can. And, and for longevity and stem cell production and, you yep. know, all of the anti-aging stuff, it's um, something you want to have in your, in your bedroom. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Everybody listening, you know, this is real. This is serious stuff. If you want to have a long, healthy life. And also, you know, the way I look at this, and I'm not the only one thinking this way, you know, our friend Dave Asprey is like on a mission to live to 185 or whatever yep. that is. Love Dave. You know, yeah, he's great. It's technology is coming, but we've got to out, we've got to live to benefit from it, it. Right. There's yeah, technology coming enough. that will reverse aging, not just help us live longer, better. You know, which is the key for, from uh, like Dr. Sinclair and I, myself and you share this is like, it doesn't matter if you live to 150, if you're all broken down and in a, you know, nursing home, it's, it's not life extension just because it's quality of life extension, you know, and I want to be doing yoga and cranking out seal fit workouts when I'm hundred or 110, yep. you know, I probably won't be moving as much weight, but you know, I'll be training mm -hmm. and I'll be productive. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, health span, exactly. So everything that we've talked about, I, I love this, how you've, you've taken, you know, this adversity of your mom and then your dad and you fought like hell for, for him. And, you know, really sorry that that didn't work out, but you're turning, you know, the, the lemons from that experience into lemonade by now using all the lessons to a fight the bureaucracies to change, you know, especially for people who don't have yeah. the resources that you and I yeah. have or, or the, uh, you know, or the capability the, to access these yeah. things. But this is the beauty of our um, the ability to reach people through podcasts, right? To, to reach a lot of people because, you know, right now we're educating 25 to 50,000 people who may or may not know some of these things. And I tell you what, some of them are furiously taking notes and be like, okay, I'm getting that. I need more. <laughs> I need to be doing my intermittent fasting. I need to yeah. get that sauna I've been thinking about doing it. You know what I mean? What, I've never heard about that. You could buy your own hyperbaric or rent your own hyperbaric chamber. But wow, why not, right? If you, yeah. love, if you love life and you've got an important mission in life and you're experiencing growth and healing, then give yourself as much time to grow as much and heal as much and to serve as much. And guess what? You may not have to repeat the whole <laughs> show. Come again. back again. Maybe we'll get to stay up there. You the just <laughs> might find enlightenment this time around. <laughs> oh, and, and, and yeah, there is just so much out there and this is my passion now. This is what I do is, is to, I spend, you know, four or five hours a day deep in study in right. there, you know, yeah. um, I'm considering doing a PhD, but then I'm thinking like, I, I just want to be too broad really for a PhD, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think it's really, really important that people just take this to heart. There is things coming down the line that is going to absolutely reverse aging, but you've got to keep your body together until that point. And that that's may right. be 10 years away or so. Yeah, so the 20 year olds are all are laughing all the way to the bank. They're thinking, yeah, yeah ooh, it's coming in my lifetime. But if you're above 50, yeah, like you got to, you got to work <laughs> overtime to keep your body youthful and, uh, and healthy 
you know, if you ever want to take advantage of some of these things, which are going to come, you know, like 2030, we're going to start seeing some of the more innovative reverse aging is what I hear in 2030, yep. the next yep. couple, you know, decades. Wow. You know, I could, we could talk for, we could ever, talk for another two hours. I think we should least. probably talk privately on, on a couple of things that I want to put you on to. So yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's do a that. couple of doctors too, that are over your way that I'd really recommend you get on the show. Okay. And stuff. So let's well, let's that. have a follow-up phone call or, or let's, you know, drop me yep. an email and let me know the best way to communicate. And um, wow. Thank you, Lisa. So your podcast is Pushing the Limits. And Pushing that's... the Limits. Come and listen to that, guys. Yeah, I think <laughs> there's, there's going to be some fantastic information. Thanks for doing that. And um, what's next? Are you going to write another book soon? Or what, what's next for you in terms of big projects besides all what we talked about? In the yeah, research? for me, it's about uh, growing. So business development right now is in a big growth phase and and. I want to have a bigger impact. I'm like you. I want to have a massive, uh, you know, exponential impact on the world with the, with the yeah. learnings and the stories and the so so building that up and getting nice. the word out there, getting this book out there, uh, relentless because I want people to be empowered and to understand that they're not powerless when they get right. given something a diagnosis like this, um, and. Uh, yeah, considering a PhD or something like that, I'm just trying to decide whether I can uh, discipline myself in one direction for a few years. It's so funny. We have so much in common. I, I literally just enrolled or applied for a doctor. Really? Yeah. Because I have yeah. a, in, in like the only thing I've never finished or the only thing I haven't finished in my life is a doctorate. I got, I was yeah. in a PhD program in leadership and then I got recalled to war. Oh, wow. 2004. That's a good reason. It was a good reason, right? So I, there, there's no guilt or anything around not finishing. I made the, the distinct decision not to finish for good reasons for my family yeah. and to go into business to teach leadership. And that's yeah. exactly what I do now. But, um, you know, it's just been like niggling at the back of my mind for the last couple yeah. of years. And so I finally said, screw it. I'm going to do it. Right? Wow. I, need a, I need another challenge anyway. So I, I'll be starting this fall. Wow, that's amazing. And I think that's so, that's a good role model for me, you know, because the thing is with a PhD program is that you are going to be sacrificing some of the other that's right. earnings and growth. That's and that's the, that's the big question that you have to sort of weigh up in your head and your life right. situation. And do the you, timing's got to be right, right? Yeah. For me, the timing wasn't right. I had to get the, my business to a place where I wasn't involved in the day-to-day -day operations. And so, yeah, you know, that's I'm where still, you would need to get I'm still to. in the weeds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> still in the weeds. So, yeah, we, we need to get to that point, I think, before I take it on. And then you've got yeah. to consider your family and things like that. So, um, but yeah. I, I, do, you, do you have a, uh, like, a centralized website? Your website is yeah. your, your name, right? Yeah, lisatamati.com. That's T-A-M-A-T-I is my name. So lisatamati.com houses all my programs and, and uh, courses. And uh, I do epigenetic testing and gene testing and, and things like that and health optimization coaching. Nice. Um, so you can reach me at, there. Um, my book's Running Hot, Running to Extremes and Relentless. And my podcast is Pushing the Limits. And mm -hmm. I'm everywhere at Lisa Tamati on Instagram and all of those sort of good things. Awesome. Appreciate that, Mark. Yeah, Lisa, thanks. You've been tremendous. Uh, I really honor your um, your mindset, your non-quitting spirit, and your contribution. And so well, keep it up. And I'm here likewise. to do anything I can to support you. And together, we'll make uh, we'll help a lot of people. And and day by day, in every way, we'll make the world better. Absolutely. Yeah, and your your you and your podcast and your books have been a part of my life for the last four years. So it's been an absolute honor to be on your show today, Mark. Thank yeah. you so much. Ooh, yeah. We'll talk soon. Awesome. All right, folks. Uh Lisa Tamati, what an incredible woman. Uh, go support her. Check out her podcast, Pushing the Limits. Um, if you have anyone suffering um the way her mom suffered or any, you know, anything and you want some motivation, uh, relentless, go check out the book. And you heard some amazing tips on longevity and health optimization. So uh, why not dive in, right? And make it part of your life so that you too can be relentless and you too can be unbeatable. Till next time, this is your host, Divine Out. <laughs>